All right, welcome to 2.2. We're going to talk about other types of equations, everything from absolute value to uh, polynomials that have degrees other than just x squared. All right, let's go ahead and just dive in. On our very first one, we have absolute value. Now, the big thing that you need to know with absolute value is that there could be 2, 1, or 0 solutions. Okay, and I'll give you a reason why. All right, let's take a look at this example. Well, if I uh, have the absolute value of 14, that's 14. And if I have the absolute value of negative 14, that is also 14. So what does that mean? That means that this piece underneath, uh, inside of our absolute value could equal either 14 or it could equal negative 14. And then when we take the absolute value of it, we get 14 as a result. So we have to create two equations. 3x plus 5 equals 14. We solve for this by subtracting 5 and getting 9, dividing by 3 and getting x equal to 3. All right, now it's a good idea to always uh, substitute back in, make sure it works. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 5 is 14, absolute value is 14, it works. All right, but now I'm going to take 3x plus 5 and set it equal to negative 14. I'm going to subtract the 5 and get 3x equal to negative 19, divide by 3, and x is equal to negative 19 thirds. All right, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, uh, do not put absolute value symbols when you're creating equations. That's bad, especially when you look at it over here. Absolute value can't equal a negative number. So notice how I'm writing the two equations without the absolute value symbol. Try and do that, okay? Uh, number two is you always want to check your answers, uh, just because remember that uh, when you go to take the absolute value, it always has to equal a positive answer, and if it doesn't equal the other side, then uh, it's not a solution. All right, when we look at example two, the first thing that you always have to do is you have to isolate the absolute value before creating two equations, okay? And then step two is to create two equations, okay? All right, that's important because I'm going to do that uh, right here. I'm going to do step one. I'm going to isolate the absolute value by subtracting 8 to both sides. And I got the absolute value of 4x minus 6 is equal to negative 8. Now, since distance uh, represents the absolute value, absolute value is distance, my distance can never equal a negative number, so that means that there is going to be no solution here. Okay, no solution, because our absolute value can't equal a negative number. Uh, that's one of the key reasons why you want to make sure that you always isolate the absolute value first. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and look at a situation in which we are uh, uh, dealing with the nth roots. All right, big idea with this is that any time that we have even roots, uh, roots, you need to always remember to use plus or minus. Okay. Uh, in example three, we don't have even roots because it's a uh, odd. Okay. The next thing that you need to uh, understand is that these leading uh, or degrees, these leading exponents that we're dealing with, that tells us how many possible solutions there are. doesn't mean that there has to be that many, but that's the most there can be. So sometimes you got to think about that because if there could be potentially four solutions, we got to make sure that we're able to get those. All right. All right, so uh, on this one, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 to get the x by itself. And I get x cubed is equal to 8. And then I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. And when I take the cube root of both sides, x is equal to 2. Uh, since the cube uh, root is not even, I don't do plus or minus here. All right, when I do example 4, I am going to subtract 5. Subtract 5, get 8x uh, to the fourth is equal to 80. I'm going to divide by 8, divide by 8, x to the 4th is equal to 10. And now I'm going to take the 4th root of both sides. And this time I have to remember that x is equal to plus or minus 
the fourth root of 10. Uh, if I could simplify the fourth root of 10, I would. All right, so there's only two solutions for example four, but remember that there could have been potentially up to four. All right, moving on to example five. All right, there's potentially six roots. Okay, this one I don't have to worry about um, getting the x to the six by itself. It's already uh, done that. So I'm just going to go right into taking the sixth root of both sides. And I cannot take the sixth root of a negative number. We are only dealing with the idea of real roots. Okay, so we're not using no i. We're not doing that yet. Okay. All right, so since I can't take the sixth root of a negative number, this one basically has no solution. All right, example six. Uh, again, I have my you know, polynomial already isolated, so I am going to take the fifth root of both sides right off the bat. I can take the fifth root of a negative number, because remember, odd roots you can do negative numbers of. All right, these cancel, and I'm left with x plus 2 is equal to the fifth root of negative 99. If I could simplify this, I would, uh, but the only factors of this are uh, 3, 3, and 11. And remember, to do the fifth root, I would need five factors that are the same, and that doesn't exist. So in order to get the x by itself, I am going to subtract 2 and subtract 2. And therefore, I am left with x is equal to a negative 2 plus the fifth root of negative 99. And that's my final answer. All right, let's go on to the second page. We take... All right, since we've already done a little bit of factoring, this is just a quick little review. Um, first thing that you always want to do is make sure that you are uh, setting equal to zero. Ours is already set equal to zero. And so then you have to think about like the idea of GCF. You got to think uh, unfoil. You got to think, you know, sum and difference of two cubes. You have to think about grouping, okay, whatever you can use. And remember, if it is not factorable, if, that does, um, if that's a possibility, then you have to think about the quadratic formula, okay? All right, so all those things have to be running through your mind. So if I look at this example, right off the bat, I see that they all have an x. So then I'm going to just double check to see if they're all divisible by 3. Well, 3 goes into 12 and 3 goes into 96. So therefore, I'm going to take out a 3x. That leaves me with an x squared, a plus 4x, and a negative 32, all equal to 0. Next, I'm going to see if I can factor this. And if I can find two numbers and multiply it to be negative 32 and add to be 4, then I'll factor it. And I believe I can if I try x plus 8 and x minus 4 equal to 0. Negative 4 times 8 is negative 32, and 8 plus negative 4 is 4. It works. All right, so remember, we're going to use the zero product property that says that if a times b equals 0, then either a equals 0 or b equals 0. So we're going to set each of these equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So 3x equals 0 gives me x equal to 0. Uh, x plus 8 equals 0. x equals negative 8. x minus 4 equals 0. x equals 4. Okay, remember how I said earlier that that 3 exponent tells us how many solutions there are. There are three solutions. x can equal 0. Uh, negative 8 and 4, okay? All right, last thing. Still dealing with the idea of factoring, just looking at it in a different form. Uh, I believe I showed this to my class a little bit already, just as a little foreshadowing. So I'll show it here again. Um, there's a couple different ways that you could possibly factor when it's something other than an x squared. 
uh, any time that the leading exponent is double the middle exponent, then you could just unfoil this, right? So I could essentially go, you know, x minus uh, x squared minus four and x squared minus two equals zero. How does this work? Well, negative four times negative two is eight. Negative four plus negative two is negative six. And your first terms are always going to be the same as that middle term. So what that means is, just to throw it out there, if I had x to the sixth minus 6x cubed plus 8 equal to 0, notice that 6 is twice as much as 3. 3 would be my first term. I would go x cubed and then minus 4 and x cubed minus 2 equal to 0. So just to show you a different possibility. All right, now we can use the zero product property. So if I go back to my original one up here, x squared minus 4 equals 0. x squared equals 4 when I put it on the other side. And then remember, since I'm doing an even root, anytime I take the square root of both sides, I need my plus or minus. And so now I got plus or minus the square root of 4, okay, which is plus or minus 2. Do the same thing over here. x squared minus 2 equals 0. x squared equals 2 when I add it to the other side. Take the square root of both sides. And x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Notice that there are four solutions here. And we said that there's a possibility of having 4. All right, so what does this have to do with u substitution? If you don't like this method, another possibility is that you basically take this equation and you change it into a uh, quadratic. So all I have to do is take half of 4 and I get 2. So that means I'm going to say u is equal to x squared. All right, so what does that mean? Well, x squared squared uh, is x to the fourth, so that means if I square this, I get u squared, which represents my x to the fourth, minus 6u, because u would be the same as x squared, and then plus 8 equals 0. Now I can factor using just the idea of, you know, a quadratic, and go u minus 4, u minus 2, but then at some point, I have to change my u back to x squared and make it x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 2 uh, equals 0. And then from there, you can hopefully see, you know, you would have to use the zero product property in order to solve. I, I won't go through all that again. So there's two possibilities. Think about uh, factoring. Okay, you just have to understand which one is the leading term. Remember that it's always half of the leading one. Otherwise, use the idea of use substitution. All right, I'm going to come over here. And right off the bat, I see that it is not factorable. Okay, And, and the reason is I can't come up with two numbers that multiply to be 4 that also add to be negative 8. All right, so I'm going to use the idea of use substitution here. I am going to say that u is equal to x squared. Well, x to the fourth would be the same thing as u squared. Okay, so I got u squared minus 8 times u plus 4 equals 0. All right, since it's not factorable, I set it above uh, when we we're looking at example 7 that we're going to have to go and use the quadratic formula. So in our case, u is equal to opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you remember the song, that might help you. All right, so in our case, u is equal to the opposite of b, which is 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which will always be positive, so negative 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times a, which is a 1, times a c, which is a all right, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So now u is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 16, which is 48, 
all over 2. I can simplify this down to the square root of 16 times 3, which means that this is equal to 8 plus or minus 4 root 3 over 2. We can use our heart idea, which basically says that if these are all divisible by the same number, we can simplify to get a 4 plus or minus 2 root 3. I'm going to run out of room here. Let's see. 2 root 3 all over 1. Or uh, since u is equal to 4 plus or minus 2 root 3, I now have to change my u back into an x squared, which means I have to take the square root of both sides, and so now x is equal to plus or minus, because remember any time I'm taking the square root of both sides or an even root of both sides, I need my plus or minus, and then I got the fourth root of 4 plus or minus 2 root 3. And I can leave my answer like this. A uh, reminder that you cannot take... Um, the square root of the 4 here, and the reason is because since it's inside of the radical with everything else, I would have to take the square root of the whole thing. I can't do it separately. Okay, so just a reminder, and so this would be our final answer. All right, so quick overview. You need to understand possibly the idea of using u. Uh, you need to understand the quadratic formula, know, know how to solve an absolute value, which means that there's two possible solutions. And remember, anytime you have even roots, you need to know the plus or minus. I will tell you that that is one of the few things that people forget the most, okay? So please remember your plus or minus.